Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to a webinar uh, from Product School. Uh, today we'll be talking about uh, transitioning into product management uh, if your background is in marketing. And uh, I will share some of my experience today. Um, shortly about me, uh, my name is Tatiana Tretiak. Uh, I've been in uh, product management for um, about five years. Uh, prior to moving to product, I was working in uh, email marketing and CRM. Uh, and my educational background is actually marketing and management. Currently, I'm working at uh, Booking.com, um, where I've been uh, for majority of these five years. Uh, before that, I was working in TUI Group, which is a big European travel operator. Uh, we're focused on CRM and marketing. And uh, before that, uh, I was working in uh, Google in uh, AdWords support and customer education. Uh, so that's the summary of my journey. As you see, I don't have very technical background. Uh, however, it didn't stop me from uh, building a career in product. Today, uh, we will cover similarities between product management and marketing management. Um, I'll speak about common knowledge gaps of uh, marketeers and how they can be filled if you want to make a transition. And also uh, what you should think about when you think of your next company to join as a new PM. Uh, what kind of industries and companies are uh, the best for career transition. So, as you probably know, product management doesn't have a very conventional path. Uh, and landing a job and product um, can be pretty hard uh, because you don't really know where to start. Uh, there's rarely a very traditional um, university education that opens your doors in the product management. And that's not because uh, universities are bad at it, but because uh, product management uh, is a relatively new discipline and it's also a crossover of many disciplines. Uh, and again, I went to university a while ago, but at least back then, even the courses which were called product management were relying a lot more on um, physical products, uh, be it uh, building a bridge or building address. Um, so digital only start getting into it uh, slightly later. Um, and another reason why there is no kind of big um, names in education or traditional education is that uh, product management is changing so fast that you can't really keep up with it because changing the educational programs, looking for professors, it all takes time. And this brings me to the point of fast changing um, job market environment because requirements and needs from PM keep changing. New technologies are coming out, um, new trends are appearing, uh, something that was in demand five years ago might be a given requirement now and some new things are now hot in the market. So uh, you always have to stay on um, track and know where to develop next. And last but not least, uh, different companies have different expectations from product managers. It starts with titles. Uh, sometimes product managers are called product managers, uh, sometimes product owners, sometimes program managers. Uh, there is a very uh, good chapter in uh, the book called Cracking PM Interview, um, where the authors actually uh, distinguish uh, out of all the big companies, what are the expectations of PMs? Not just in terms of naming of roles, but also what skills are expected from them. Do they expect them to be technical or data savvy or more business savvy and focus on communication? So if you want to know more about this part, uh, I suggest to check it out. So all of these things are hard, like, <laughs> but uh, luckily it also gives opportunities. Um, over the last couple of years, um, the demand for product managers uh, has grown immensely. And um, I think based on the recent survey from uh, Product Marketing, uh, Product Management Institute, um, around 30% of respondents out of over 2,000 said that they actually struggle to find talent. So companies really have to find a way to increase the pool uh, to find good PMs. And new PMs is one way to get there. And another good news that since there is no big um, traditional education you have to undergo through or certifications and your hands-on experience and desire are more important, it means that if you compare product management to let's say medicine or law, it has pretty low sunk costs, both in terms of um, finance and in terms of time you need. So product didn't always imply tech. 
And if you're a marketeer uh, who's watching this webinar, uh, you probably are familiar with this famous 4P by Philip Kotler, uh, where he was saying that for every uh, product to be successful, marketing mix should include four things, product, price, promotion, and place. So back in the day, product was just one of the four Ps. And um, currently these days, in many companies, especially e-commerce companies, price and promotion also becoming slowly part of product so if you were um, a marketeer learning about four p's you can actually say that product management is one of the p's and you can be focusing on that and building career specializing there and philip kotler is not only famous for four p's a lot of actually quotes from him they um also very relevant in product management days um, currently. So things like it's no longer enough to satisfy the customer, you might delight them. It's all about being customer centric and bringing value to the customer. The aim of selling is to satisfy the customer need. The aim of marketing is to figure out this need, figuring out customer needs and understanding these needs and fulfilling them is what product managers focus on every day, uh, be it pain points or delighters. And finally, uh, something that every product manager and product designer would agree with these days, um, who should ultimately design the product? The customer, of course. And this has been the mantra of uh, design thinking, of uh, product management in general. So if you see like all this um, quotes and learnings back from 1960s, 1970s, they are actually very applicable to product management. So it's a lot more common between product and marketing uh, than at first comes to eye. So if you're a marketeer these days, um, you probably already have a set of skills uh, and I would like to briefly cover uh, which of them you can actually bring with you to product uh, to kickstart your career faster. Uh, market research is the first thing that comes to mind. If you remember uh, Mad Men, uh, the group of uh, men watching focus groups and the reactions of women using lipsticks and so on and so forth, uh, this type of research as in focus group, field studies, surveys, they are also extremely valuable in product because most of the new product ideas start from customer discovery and discovery of their needs, which happens for user research. So if you are involved in market research uh, and talking to your customers as a marketeer, you actually can apply the same skill sets to user research. There is a slight difference, though, which can help you bridge the gap is that is as a marketeer, all you do with these insights is forwarding them to product team. Next time, also try to think what kind of changes would you make based on what you have observed? And you can share them with the product team. They might necessarily implement it and don't take it personally. What is valuable here is the feedback they give you. Why will they follow up with your idea? Why not? And this will get you into thinking, how does the product management mindset work? Another aspect uh, which is pretty useful in both roles is being data savvy and as a marketeer you're probably uh, working with some kind of campaign analysis or reporting on particular results in um, marketing and being data savvy in general is extremely important in product because more and more products are built in a data-driven way and once you transition into product you can apply the skills when for example uh, analyzing a testing results uh, or building dashboards, interpreting dashboards. So being good with data is something that can be carried over from marketing disciplines to product management. And I gotta say, um, a lot of marketeers I know, <laughs> they are a lot better in SQL than I am because in their jobs, they had to use daily to report on particular client, on particular product results. So as a product manager, you stop focusing on one particular query you run, you just run them more often, and you also try to ask and answer bigger questions um, by running those queries and extracting the data. Finally, there are three skills which um, are crucial for both, and as a marketeer, will make you stand out as a PM. Every product manager should know their competition. 
same goes for marketing. You need to know who are your competitors, what are they doing, what worked to them, what didn't, are you behind, are you ahead? So things like SWOT analysis um, and others is something that would help you understand um, who is your competition and they will be useful in both marketing and product. Stakeholder management is something that is universal. The difference is you manage different types of stakeholders depending which role you're in. But things as creating a map of your stakeholders or a RASI framework or just the art of following up and chasing people is something that would trans easily transition from marketing to product. So if you're doing that, great job. And the last point is um, a bit questionable. It depends if you want to stay in the same industry you're in, and we'll cover that a bit more later. But uh, the main knowledge is obviously important. So if you know a lot about a particular industry and it's a specialized, in, specialized industry, then um, it's really useful that you can transfer this knowledge from marketing to product. And I think for me, that's um, what works well because um, I worked in a travel operator company a more old school one with actual planes and buses and hotels. So I knew a lot about how travelers behave. So when I went for, to, to booking.com, I could actually use a lot of this knowledge um, to have initial discussions um, on how traveling happens and travel booking happens on booking.com. So this domain knowledge is not something to be underestimated. So all these things are great, right? Like you, you see that you're already probably a lot closer than um, you think to being a PM. Um, however, there are some common things that sometimes stand out that people think are blocking them or they are indeed blocking them and they need to work on it. So how do you identify these gaps? Um, those things also come in from my experience. So maybe it's not applicable for every marketing role or marketing organization. Uh, but one thing is definitely a difference in speed of change and agility. Um, marketing is known uh, for going for a lot of alignments and things, especially if you work with agencies, like some things that you want to uh, create six months from now or a year from now actually should be already started today. And I remember being shocked when I found out that the Christmas ads that um, UK supermarkets uh, run around Christmas, they actually take a year. The moment the ad airs, they start thinking about next year Christmas ad. And in uh, tech and in product, things are a bit different. So you still have a planning of six, 12 months ahead with the roadmap, but you're actually um, trying to speed up the development cycle and get the learnings as fast as possible and iterate as fast as possible. So you have a bit less predictability of what's going to happen and you have to adjust constantly. And it all happens at a lot faster speed. So it's something that takes some time to get used to. Another aspect that you will be asked about a lot uh, when you interview is prioritization. And if you think of it, prioritization is something we do on a daily basis as um, humans. <laughs> you prioritize whether to watch Netflix or go to the gym. You prioritize whether to buy uh, one type of pasta or different type of pasta. And the difference is that when it comes to product management prioritization, it's not about saying, I will do the right thing first, because that's an obvious answer. You need to familiarize yourself with frameworks and uh, more scientific methods of prioritization. I think um, there are plenty of materials on that in product schools, so I'll let you check it out, but make sure that uh, prioritization is not something you take lightly, and it's something you can give good examples on and start applying it in uh, your current projects so you actually have good examples to share in your interviews. And last but not least, uh, a lot of people say, oh, I can't go into product management because I can't code. Well, I thought the same, uh, but actually after working on product for a while, I've heard from many of my uh, peers and tech counterparts that PM who doesn't code is actually a better PM because the job of a product manager is to define what needs to build, not how it will be built. Because once you start interviewing into how, then um, developers think like they can't do their own job. 
Of course, you still need to know the lingo, you need to understand um, the, how technology works in general and how your product works from a technical side. So you can make a call whether a particular feature can be built or not, or estimate the right amount of time to make it happen. So you still need basic knowledge, uh, but you don't need to be a coder yourself. So don't let it um, stop you. So how to bridge the gap? Um, how to actually focus on your strength and make a transition to product? First item is not necessarily for product only, it's for being happy with your career in general. Um, try to think of what are the highlights of your current work day? Like what makes you happy during the day? Which type of activities or type of meetings? So try to kind of make a mini audit of your work week to understand what brings you most joy and energy in your work. And then try to understand either by talking to people who are already PMs uh, or just by reading online, if moving into product will actually increase the amount of this joyful thing in your life. Because this type of analysis will help you understand if product is right for you and if you actually enjoy the job or not. Another aspect to take into account as to mentally prepare uh, for the switch is which stage of product development are you more familiar with? And by product development, I mean not the technical product development, but um, product lifecycle. Is your current company focusing more on MVPs and growth at all costs? Is it more a mature product that needs iteration and maintenance? Or maybe uh, it's a declining product and you focus a lot more on the retention. So you would be probably not surprised that in a lot of job descriptions for PMs, um, a lot of these aspects actually mentioned. Some are particularly interested in people who have experienced in fastly growing companies, uh, someone, someone who had a very big experience on high traffic websites, some more mature examples. So think which bucket do you fall in? And this way you'll understand a uh, big transition will be a bit easier to make. And another aspect is which market segment do you have most experience, expertise in? How are you currently working in B2B or B2C or maybe a marketplace? Knowing business models in theory is important, but having an experience in particular type of business model is super valuable. And if you are changing a career and you are changing the type of job you're doing, you will actually make the transition smoother if you stay in the same um, type of business as you were in terms of B2B or B2C or marketplace. Because you have to change a lot of things at once which means that it's better to keep something stable so you can focus on things that you are not so good at and need to improve on. So once you know your strength, it's time to identify the right company. And for the transition, um, I personally observed three common steps. Option one is transition within your own company. And this sometimes uh, sounds like an easiest thing, but it also comes with some drawbacks. Um, obviously, if your company has some kind of um, junior product management programs or any type of training for aspiring PMs to recruit from within, that's the first way to go. Uh, you already know the product, you already know the company, the culture, sometimes even the stakeholders you'll be working with. So a lot of things already known. However, um, if you don't have any kind of formal way to get into product, simply applying for open internal vacancies is often, is often not the most successful approach because just your CV will not show you all your motivation and skill set uh, that you have. So if you are one if you want to transition from within, try to do it by uh, talking to hiring managers and actually showing your interest and engagement and how you can contribute. Option two is uh, transitioning within the same industry. And of course, if you work in a giant of an industry as a marketeer and you want to become straight a PM in the equal sized companies, that will be a bit trickier. However, um, if you work in a very big company and there is 
uh, challenge a company around. I think banking can be a good example. Uh, if there are challenging companies around who are smaller and they want to conquer the market, if it is allowed by your non-competes, a good way could be to move to the smaller companies, use your expertise and knowledge about the market and the business, and transition into PM in there. And option three is transition on the industry's overlap. Uh, this is where I put my case in. Um, I've worked in travel, uh, which is more traditional type of travel, with shops to buy uh, tour packages and uh, also some online presence, but still more traditional company than a lot of e-commerce these days. And I worked at Google, which is a tech company. Yes, I wasn't doing a technical role, but I knew what the working tech company is like. I knew the expectations, the, the culture and things like that. So when I put together uh, tech and travel, uh, what came on my radar is booking.com, uh, which is the biggest OTA in the world. So look for your experience and your CV to see if you can find this type of um, overlaps uh, in industries you worked in before. And if there's any company that needs uh, expertise in both. And this way you'll be able to kind of sell yourself better uh, in the interview and uh, also know a lot more once you go into the job. And the last piece of advice I'd like to give, um, in the defined right company is not just a uh, type of product or type of business or salary range. Other aspects um, you should consider when moving from marketing to product is that you, or from any discipline to product, is that you still have a lot to learn. So probably joining as a first PM in a startup is not going to be an easy feat. Being a second PM in a startup will not be so easy either because the first PM will be so busy, they will, know, they will have no time to actually train you and help you. So the first thing I suggest is look for companies with strong PM peer network. This way you can learn from your colleagues um, and also observe different styles of product management to see which one fits you best. And the good way to gauge it um, during interview process is just asking at recruiter stage, how big is the product organization? Do they have one team, five teams, 20, 50? It gives you an understanding how big is product community there. The second aspect is look for companies that match your values. And this is extremely important because as a product manager, you often have to evangelize and promote your product internally and externally. So if you work for a company that doesn't match your values, doing so will take a lot of mental effort and also can um, confuse you in terms of, do I not enjoy product management in general or do I just not enjoy the product I work on? And this can be a life-changing question because if you made all this effort to move into product just to realize you don't like it, this can be pretty disappointing, but it's also okay. <laughs> uh, and last but not least, um, companies with flatter structure, I personally find uh, a better kickstart for your product career. Um, not because you can grow faster, flat structure is there for a reason, but flat structure and lack of bureaucracy is um, a signal that you can actually spend more time on your product management craft and less on paperwork and um, other things which are not that much related to product. It can be a medium-sized company or some big companies actually preach having a flat structure. So if it's something very hierarchical and very traditional, you probably will not learn at such a fast pace as you could. So this is uh, the tips I wanted to give. I hope you now know that uh, transitioning from marketing to product is not something impossible. And some of the myths or concerns you had uh, are now a bit less scary. And um, I hope it was helpful. If you have additional questions or want advice, feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn. And um, I'll see you then. Thank you. Bye.